Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Praise God. We thank God for another opportunity the Lord has given me. Praise God to come and share with you the Word of God on this Friday. Praise God. It is September the 16th, 2022. And I am Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Once again, praise God, declaring unto you, praise God, all that are listening today that Jesus Christ he is the answer. He's the answer to all of our problems. It doesn't matter how large, how small they may be. Praise God, we serve a great God. And I'm here to tell you that he can do abundantly above all that we ever could. Praise God, he could even consider in our hearts and mind if we only would put our trust in him. Praise God. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. If we would only, praise God, invite him. He, he is a mighty counselor. Praise God. He has the answer to all of our problems. But if we would just humble ourselves before the Lord, praise God, and seek his face, I think we could see some changes, not only in the world, but also in our personal lives. And I do believe that all of us could stand a little help, praise God, in our personal lives at this very moment, praise God. But now I do have a word. I have a word from the Lord just for you today. Turn with me once again to, praise God, to the book of Ephesians, the book of Paul's letter to the Christians at Ephesus uh, called the Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And I do encourage you once again, look with me, open your Bibles, praise God. And if you can't, uh, find scriptures, uh, you know, uh, in, in a reasonable amount of time, then just jot it down. And then later on, you can go back, look at these scriptures that I do believe. As I always say, that I believe God would always give you an even greater revelation, praise God, for your diligence, for you, praise God, showing the interest in God's word enough to go back and to look at these scriptures again. Ephesians 6 chapter, and we're looking at verse 10 there. We're going to read 10 through 12 there. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, uh, the apostle Paul, the great apostle Paul, he says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, we bless you today. We thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity. Lord, you granted me to come once again to share your word with your people. Now, Lord, I pray the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that anointing that breaks every yoke. Lord, may go before me, speak through me, Lord, and give give, give anointing, anoint the ears of the hearers today. Lord, that they may hear what thus saith the Lord, and thereby be enriched through thy word today. Father God, and I'll be mindful that I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, let's look back at that tent verse there. Praise God. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, he said, Father, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And that's going to be our subject. Praise God. Christ says, be strong. Be strong is the word that God has placed upon my heart today just for you. Be strong. Praise God. And we know that uh, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And under that inspiration, God instructs the believers in Christ on how we are to live and to deal uh, with the situations that we are going to face in this Christian life. Praise God. It's inevitable, inevitable that there will be challenges. There will be trials. There will be tribulations in this Christian walk. And Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, instructs us, praise God, on how to live this Christian life, how we are uh, commanded of the Lord. He says to be strong. Praise God, be strong, meaning basically that we are to not just sit back and, and, and relax and, and do nothing. Oh, no, no, that's not, that's not the calling there. Not to sit back, relax, do nothing until the Lord, he comes again. No, no, we have work to do. Praise God, we have work to do, which will require, require of us a lot of labor, 
Praise God. And praise God, some fighting. We got some, some fighting going on here. But now Paul in this passage describes the believers as soldiers. We are described as soldiers in a battle. Praise God. A battle that's going to require great strength. According to Apostle Paul, great strength here. Amen. A battle that uh, will require the believer to put on the whole armor. The whole armor of God. And to stand firm. Firm as we wrestle against spiritual forces uh, uh, of this world. Praise God. We're commanded to put that whole armor of God on. But now, sadly, sadly, one Praise God. There, there are many, big, many false prophets, the Bible says, have gone out into the world. And, and sadly to say, they've taken lead positions in our pulpits today. False prophets, many of them, male and female. Amen. And they teach us that the Christian life is one big picnic. That's what they try to make it seem like it's a picnic. One big Christmas celebration, year-round Christmas, Christian celebration. Praise God with Christ being a year-round Santa Claus. That's what they make it, uh, the Christian life seem like. But that's not true, though. Praise God. But now, therefore, the church is now, uh, according to the scriptures, uh, they are at ease in Zion. That's what the Bible says. Uh, beware. The, when, when you find Christians are at ease in Zion, and they have been placed in this position by the false prophets that are saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Praise God. They're at ease in Zion, and therefore they're not qualified. Not qualified to fight the good fight of faith. It kind of reminds me of what I heard just recently. Uh, one guy said about our military here in the United States. It's been weakened. It's been weakened through all this rhetoric, this transgender rhetoric and all that. Our, our military, many have uh, been uh, 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 career uh, uh, good soldiers have been dismissed because of not getting a COVID shot or not agreeing with this transgender rhetoric that's going on. And therefore, our military is very weak right Right now, but now so it is in the Christian battle. Huh? Praise God. Many of the church people are weakened today. Praise God, because they are made to believe that the Christian battle is all uh, praise God, it's just a picnic. It's just one big ball of fun. You know, every day is a fun blessing, blessings, and all that good stuff, you know. But now, therefore, they're not prepared to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. But now, all throughout the Bible, though. All throughout the Bible, the believer is described as being in perpetual motion. He's in motion, praise God, fighting with the enemies, enemies that are within us. Yes, we got enemies within us, praise God. But also the enemies that are without, outside of us, praise God. L listen, at, look at 1 Corinthians as Paul uh, describes this battle a little bit more in detail. Look at 1 Corinthians 9. Turn with me now. Go to 9. I'll, I can find it. I believe I can find it here. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Look at 20. Six now and again, jot it down, jot it down. Praise God, jot it down if you are not skillful in finding scripture, you know, real fast. Now, praise God. Uh, but now, uh, Paul says here that uh, uh, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of Christ, that uh, we are called, we are called to fight. We're called, praise God, to battle with the enemy that's within us and without us. Look at 1 Corinthians 9 and look at 26 there. 26, Paul said, and I therefore so run. I run. I run. He's in motion here. I run. I run. Not as uncertainly. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body. I keep under my body. I bring it into subjection. That's that enemy within that wants to control us, the body. He said, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Praise God. So he, he, he let us know that we are, praise God, we are definitely in a battle. And Christ says to us, we must be strong. We must be strong today. Look at Philippians. Go on Philippians again. Listen to Paul once again as he describes the fact that we have to be strong uh, to be victorious. 
praise God, in this battle that God has uh, set before us. He said, I send you forth the sheep in the midst of wars. He knew it was going to be a battle. He told us he's going to send us right into the midst of them. They're going to hate us without a cause, just like they did him. They're going to persecute us, going to say all mean things about us, called us uh, crazy, and all kind of things. Look at Philippians 3 now. Copy down now. Copy these down. And go back later on, and and pray God get 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 even more uh, deeper revelation from these this word of God. Philippians three twelve. Paul said, "Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that if that that if that I may apprehend that for which I also am." apprehended of Christ Jesus. Look what he says in 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, but there's one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, and I'm reaching forth unto those things which are before. And then he said, I press. Oh, it's a press way. Mm, Christ said, be strong, because you got to press your way. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. It's a press way. Praise God. You know, the, the battles that uh, David fought, praise God. When we think about the battles that David fought, uh, uh, and uh, that's the man that's after God's own heart. Now, David, uh, it, the battles he fought it, in those battles is, is a figure or type of the warfare that all of the believers in Christ will have to fight. All of David's battles, we can see in those battles ourselves dealing with the same situation. Look at Psalms. Let's look at Psalms 18 as David engages in this battle, in the battle. Praise God. Same battle. Same battle that we're going to have to engage in. That's why the Lord said, be strong. Praise God in the Lord, the power of his might. Amen. Look at David now as he engages in battle. Psalms 18. We're looking at 37. Psalms 18, 37. Stay with me now. And again, jot it down. Praise God. If you can't keep up, if you can't find scriptures real fast, jot it down. Psalms 18, 1837, I have pursued my enemies. Oh, he's a warrior. He's a warrior. I pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. Oh boy, he's a soldier. Look at 38. He said, I have, I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. And then 39, thou hast girded me with strength. The Lord God has gutted me with strength, he said, unto the battle. Praise God. Thou hast subdued me unto me, those that rose up against me. He said the Lord had given him victory. Praise God. He sounded like a warrior. This sounds like a warrior in a battle to me. Praise God. What about you? Don't it sound like a warfare? Well, that's the same warfare that we are called to engage in. But now we must be strong. Christ said, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. See, that's what Paul said. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. For this is where our strength comes from. Praise God. Our strength comes from the Lord and the power of his might. All of our strength, all of our power to, to engage and to, 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 to accomplish the mission for which Christ has given us as believers, all of our strength and power is found in Christ, who is our commander in chief. Yes, he's our commander in chief. Praise God. And in this Paul, Paul was a firm believer. Praise God. And looking to the Lord, looking at Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith. He was a firm believer. Look at Ephesians 3 there. Praise God. Look at Ephesians 3. And this is the man that uh, wrote uh, most all of our New Testament that we have today. Ephesians 3, 14. God has given him the instruction on how to instruct the believer after we are saved. See, after we're saved, the battle, you really just began as far as our engagement is concerned. The main battle, Christ fought on the cross. Praise God, he won the victory for us. huh? But now you got to play it out. I got to play it out. I have it. It's mine. It's secure. It's secure. I have the victory. There's no doubt about that. But in my role every day in this world, I'm going to have to live it out. I'm going to have to play it out. And I'm going to have to battle it out also. Praise God. Look at Ephesians 3, 14. Look what Paul says here. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, Paul said, I want the Lord to grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened, oh, praise God, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, in our inner man, we need his strength. Paul, God, Paul praying to God that he'll grant us according to his riches, praise God, that inner strength that we need in order to be uh, victorious uh, in this life, in this life here. Remember now, I'm saying that uh, on the cross, we have the final victory. We have the victory. But now, taste and see. Oh, you need to taste and see. The Lord is good. Only way we taste, we have to deal with a little battle here, a little hand-to-hand -hand combat here, and see God bring us through, how he strengthens us, praise God, in the midst of our battles. But now, we are fellow laborers, though. Praise God, we're fellow laborers, though. Amen. We're fellow laborers with Christ. Now, I'm talking about the saved. Now, I'm talking about if you're saved, if you know you've been born again, if you know you've been changed, indwelt by the power of the Holy Spirit, then we're fellow laborers with Christ. Praise God. And we cannot excuse ourselves from the battle. No true believer. You cannot. You cannot opt out. Praise God. It's not a draft here. God ain't drafting anybody. You're called to do battle. Praise God. But now I'm mighty much afraid, though. Praise God. Praise God. I'm mighty much afraid today that the false prophets that are doing our pulpits today, uh, males and females, quite a few of them, they have sissified the army of the Lord. I'm afraid so. Just as our present government in Washington, D.C. have done to our military. They have sissified our military. Praise God. But Paul would have the believers to realize that we have a role and a responsibility in this battle. Praise God. We do. None, nobody's exempt here. No true Christian is exempt from this battle. And over and over again, he makes it plain to us, praise God, that there are no exemption whatsoever. Look at Philippians 2. Philippians 2, praise God. And, and look at 12 there. Philippians 2 and 12. Praise God. The Apostle Paul said, Wherefore, my brethren, my beloved, that is, he's talking to the believers here, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not always, as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Now you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God, he said, that working in you, both the will and to do of his good pleasure. He said, work it out now. He didn't say work for it. You don't work for no salvation. Nobody. Christ done the work. He said it is finished on the cross. So the work is already done. But now you and me, we do have a role to play because our salvation is going to be challenged from within and from without. So we're going to work it out. Praise God. We're going to bring this victory into this sphere that we live in right here. Praise God. Going to work it out with fear and we're going to work it out with trembling because God works in us. God working in us. God is working in us. You're not alone. Don't think you're alone in this battle. No, you're not alone. God is in us. God is working in us and through us, both the will, the will and to do of his good pleasure. Praise God. That's the word of God. Amen. Praise God. But now we need strength though. We need strength to do the work of the Lord. Praise God. And thank God he has provided that strength. He's provided the strength that we need to fight the good fight of faith. All that we need, all that pertain to life and godliness as we walk through this this God-hating world that we live in today, God has supplied our every need. Praise God. We have only to trust him, to trust in his word, trust in his word. Philippians 4, 13. Most of us know that by, by memory only. Praise God. I can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, through Christ who strengthens me. There's nothing that I cannot do, praise God, by the grace of God. But now, and also Paul says in Colossians 1, oh boy, he's a great encourager. Praise God. Thank God for the apostle Paul. Thank God that he encourages us on this journey uh, as we as we do this hand-to-hand -hand combat with the enemy within and the enemy without. Look at what he said in Colossians 1, 28. He said, whom we preach one in every man. What do you want about Paul? And teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present 
present every man perfect in Christ. So he warning us, wherefore I also labor. Paul said, I'm working, I'm working. I'm in motion here. I'm moving, I'm, I'm striving, striving according to his working, his working, which worketh in me mightily. Yes, he left us here. The Lord saved us as believers, and he left us here to do battle to do battle, to spread the word of God. And that is itself a call to battle because this world that we live in today don't want to hear the word of God. They don't want you telling them nothing about their sins and and, 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 and their hedonism and their lifestyle. They don't want you to tell them so we're in a battle. We're in a battle. But I thank God, Paul said in that 29th verse again, first. Uh, Colossians 1, 29, wherefore also I, I also labor, striving according to his workings, which works in me. Praise God mightily. Hmm? Praise God. But now, again, I want to make this plain to all the believers, all the believers. There is no sideline in this battle. I'm sorry, no sideline. Hmm? Nobody's standing on the sideline. There's nobody standing in the bleachers here. Praise God. That's a great crowd of witnesses, the Bible said, that are watching us from, from heaven. Praise God. As we run this race that's set before us. But now, down here, there is no sidelines in this battle. Nor is there a place for any, praise God, any kind of self-help mentality. Huh? Any trusting in, in self to help you. No, 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 no. That ain't going to work. See, uh, our struggles and, and the conflict, the trials and the tribulations uh, that we have to deal with are part of the Christian faith. It's part of our Christian lifestyle. Mm. Praise God through Christ. Through Christ, we are more than conquerors. Through him that died for us. Through Christ. Praise God. We're overcomers. Give mm. good cheer. I've overcome the world. Through Christ. In Christ, we're overcomers. And again, praise God. The apostle Paul said, be strong. <laughs> Y'all be strong, believers, as you deal with these complex issues that we're facing today, which all are anti-God, anti-Christ. Be strong in the Lord. That's what he says. Hmm? He requires us to, to recognize, uh, you know, that we're weak. That's how you be strong. That's how you be strong. Recognize that we have weaknesses. Hmm? Praise God. And based upon the amount of of weaknesses that we can see in ourselves, uh, the weakness we perceive within ourselves, based upon that, is going to determine the amount of strength that we're going to receive from the Lord. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. When I'm weak, then am I strong? That's what Paul said. But the way that he says in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 12 now, uh, based on the amount of weakness that we see in ourselves, it's going to determine the amount of strength that the Lord imparts to us. Second Corinthians 12, 9, what he says there, praise God. And he said, and he said unto me, God said unto Paul, what he says here, God said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Mm, praise the Lord. My strength will manifest itself in a, a, a great way in your times of weakness, when you realize that you are weak, insufficiency abide within you to fight this great fight. Hmm? He said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, Paul says, well, thank you, Lord, gladly, I'm glad. Therefore, I glory, I glory in my infirmities. I glory in my weakness realizing that this is the uh this is the equation that's needed for the power that the power of Christ might rest on me hallelujah praise god see we must empty ourselves empty ourselves of our own ability our own power before the lord will pour his power his strength into us we have to empty ourselves when the clouds are full, they empty themselves in order to take on more. So when we empty ourselves of our own ability, our own strength, our own power, mm, and then look to the Lord, for he pulls his strength into us. Praise God. In other words, as we daily fight our battles, and I know a lot of you are fighting some battles at this very moment. Praise God. But I want you to know, as we fight our battles, we must feel our lack of power. 
Hmm? We must feel our faintness, the faintness that's within our hearts. Praise God. And, and then we'll exchange uh, all of this for his strength and his power. Praise God. See, the recipe, dog, the recipe, I guess we can call it a recipe. The recipe for acquiring his power is to keep our eyes upon him while at the same time recognizing our inadequacies, our weaknesses, our inabilities to fight this fight. Mm. Look at Psalms, praise God, 24. I love, oh, David, the man after God's own heart. I just love the word of God. I love the word of God, period, though, praise God. Look at Psalm 24 and 8 there. Uh, Paul asked the question, who is this king? Huh? Psalm 24, 8, who is this king of glory? Mm -hmm. Then he asked the question, the Lord, strong and mighty. Oh, uh, the Lord, mighty in battle. Praise God. He, that's the God that we serve. Praise God. He's strong. He's mighty. Praise God. He's mighty in the battles that we face today when we allow him to take the lead huh? because of our uh, weakness and our inadequacy. He told Joshua, Joshua, when the Lord came to Joshua and um, Joshua, uh, you know, uh, asked him who he was. Are you on our side? Are you, who, who, who are you? Praise God. And Joshua attempted to take the lead. And the Lord told him, said, no, it don't work like that. I got, I go, I'm going to go before you. Huh? You get behind me. See, we got to let the Lord go before us in our battles. Praise God. And let us remember. Well, look at Psalm 29. I, I like that one too. Going on down to 29. I think I, I noticed that one too. 29, 1, 29, 1. Give unto the Lord. Give unto the Lord. He said, oh, ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory. And strength. Give him the credit. He's the one that has the strength. He's the one that deserved the glory. He's the one that deserved all the praise. So we ought to give it to him. Give it to him. Praise God. Don't steal from God. You know, too many of us are trying to steal. Take credit. You take credit for what? You, you, you have no ability. You have no power. You have nothing. Without me, Christ said, you can do nothing. Amen. Zero. Say, oh, have you come to that realization in your life? If you want his strength, his power, his victory, you got to come to that point in your life that you recognize that it is his power. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. Praise God. Let us remember also that we are, we are the bride of Christ. We are his body. Am I right about that? And he provides for his spiritual body. Yes, sir. You know, Paul says that in the natural scheme of things, no man hates his own body. Oh, Paul said, no, but he, but he cherishes it. Oh, Paul said. Now, but now in the case of Christ, this is doubly true. It's, it's super true. Amen. Christ cares for us. And he promises. Praise God. He promises. The promises that he made to us should remove all doubt from our hearts. Praise God. All doubts in my heart and mind, the fact that he loves and cares for us. Praise God. He cares for us and he provides for us the power that we need hmm? in order to win, in order to face the many battles that we're going to have to deal with. Praise God. Amen. See, the words he spoke again to Joshua many years ago, they are also applicable to us today. Look at it, Joshua 1. Go back to 1 now. Praise God. Go, go in the Old Testament there. Jot it down now. Like I say, if you can't uh, find scriptures in a reasonable amount of time, then uh, just go back and, and jot them down and then go back later on. And as I say, I do believe because of your obedience, God will give you an even deeper revelation. We're just touching here. We're just touching upon God's word as he has given me for you today. Look at Joshua 1.9. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, here, here, Moses said, have I not commanded thee? This is what the Lord says here. Have I not commanded thee to be strong and of good courage? I commanded you. God commands us today. Be strong. Yes. And of good courage. Yes. Be not afraid. And I know fear, fear is very big today in our society. But God said, I command you. I command you, believer, you be strong. You be of good courage and do not be afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Don't lose your hope. Praise God. God has given us a blessed hope. 
It's not predicated upon what we see here, taste, touch. It ain't, it ain't about senses, honey. It's about what the Word of God says. We believe the Word of God. Amen. He said, be not afraid, be, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee. Hallelujah. Whithersoever thou goest, whatever we have to deal with, whatever the problem may be, God is with us. Praise God. That was Joshua. Joshua. I command thee. Praise God, you be strong and realize I'm with you. God is with you. I don't care what you're going through. And if you're saved, remember now, we already have the victory at the cross. Christ, he got victory for all of us. All Every believer, we're more than conquerors right this very second. But now that does not eliminate the trials, the tribulation that we must go through and see that victory played out all over again. Again, the world needs to see it, how God works through us and give us victory through our many trials and tribulations here. Praise God. Look at Isaiah 40. That, now, that's a good one there. I like Isaiah 40. That's one of my favorite scriptures and probably uh, one of your favorites. Also, Isaiah 40 and 29. Look at 40 and 29. 40 and 29. He gave it power to the faint. Oh, boy. Mm, he give power to the faint, and to them that have no might, hmm, he increases strength. That's the word of God. But now look at that 30. Even the youth shall faint oh, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Hallelujah. Wait on the Lord. Again, I said, wait. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not Faint. Oh, praise God. What a gracious promise that is. Hmm? Our God, he does not give us a promise that he cannot keep. Hmm? In him, there's only yea and amen. Praise God. But now, seeing that Christians are targeted today, we are. Yes, you know we're targeted today. We we'll, we'll, we'll are, are, are made to be responsible for uh, most of the problems that we have in the world today. Praise God. We're, we're responsible or we are, are standing in the way of what they call progress. We're standing in the way. So we're targeted today uh, because of our uh, pro-God stance, our pro-word pro stance. We, are, we stand on the word of God. If God's word says it, that's the end of the conversation. We're pro morality. Uh, we stand. We believe in morality, just like our founding fathers. They said these words when they wrote the Constitution, when they got together, that this document will not work for immoral people. It only will work for people that believe in morality, in holiness, not in sin. Praise God! But because of our stance today, we're targeted. We're targeted. We're going to have to fight. We need to be strong. Christ said be strong because you're going to have to fight because our position on abortion is a closed book. What is it to debate? Hmm? It's plain old murder and that's it. Praise God. And as true believers, we have to fight because of our stance there. Now, church folks, I know y'all church folks, y'all, y'all waver back and forward like the wind you're blowing. And so you, you, you'll be all right. Uh, they going they, they gonna be buddies with you. Praise God. But now, uh, true believers, be, we can be talking because we don't, we don't cut into this homosexual thing. We don't cut into this uh, transgenderism. We don't even cut to these, these, these nature worshipers, tree huggers. Uh, we don't cut into them. Praise God. Something like that's a problem. Is that uh, we we messing up the atmosphere, climate control? That ain't your problem. Your problem is inside of you. Your problem is sin. Our problem is sin. Then thank God Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. He took care of the sin problem if we would only believe and accept what He has already done. Praise God. But now we're talking today because we're not going to uh, join in with this either. Nistic, uh, uh, display that's going on in the world today. We're not gonna see, but so we're considered the bad guys. We are the bad guys, except that, uh, y'all might well accept that if you're truly, we are the bad guys. Hmm? Uh, the, the, uh, the impediments, uh, we're impediments to this democratic process, they call it. They said we got a democratic government here and it's working good, except for them, them Christians. 
Hmm? Oh, every time we try to do democratic, democratic, democratic. See, but the sad part of it all is that many of the church folks, that's what, that's what really, that really, really hurts me. The church folks are complicit with these anti-God haters. Church folks are complicit all the while thinking they're doing God a service. Hmm? I'm going to tell you something. When the devil blinds you, he blinds you. Let the blind lead the blind. Praise God. And that's what they're doing. So now, praise God. As I close for today, uh, we, we must be aware that the battle will intensify mm, as days go on. In these last days, we're living in. The battle will intensify. Christ says we must be strong. Be strong. And this can happen, only happen, as we include prayer. In our quest for strength. Amen. Prow. Praise God. Key key here. Prow. Prow. Prow is a primary way in which the Lord's strength is conveyed unto us. Prow. Prow. Yes, sir. Prow is, is the means in which we exchange our weaknesses for the Lord's strength. Through prayer. Through prayer. Prayer is the attitude we must have. Praise God. Which is an attitude of dependency mm, upon God. For his strength, for his power. Talk about prayer. Prayer is, is the confession of our weaknesses and helplessness and our needs for his help and power and spreading it all out before the Lord. Lord, I can't do it, Lord. I need your help, Lord. Praise God. I realize how, how, how weak I am, how inadequate I am, Lord. I need you to give me the strength to overcome this mountain. Praise God. Give me the voice to speak to this mountain in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And this, praise God, uh, is plainly demonstrated in, in the life of David again. Praise God. That man again out of God's own heart. Look at Psalm 86 as we get ready to close here. Look at Psalm 86 and 16. 86 and, six, 86 and 16. Look at it with me. David said, oh, turn to me. And have mercy upon me. I will tell God, give thy strength. Give thy strength unto thy servant. And save the son of thy handmaid. Lord, save me. Pray God what David says in 86, Psalm 86. But now if you're going on 105, I tell you, listen at him one more time. 105 and 4 there. 4 and 5. Look what he said. Seek the Lord in his strength, brothers. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Looking unto Jesus. Keep him, keep his face before you. Not the world's solutions to our problems, but God has been the solution through Christ Jesus. Amen. Psalms 138. You go on down to 138. He says uh, in verse 3 there, In the day when I cried, thou answerest me, mm -mm, and strengthenest me with strength down in my soul. Praise God. Call on me. Praise God. Say, I'll answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things that you have not seen before. Praise God. And as we navigate through this anti-God world that we live in right now, and it's not going to get any better. No, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. But as we go through, let's keep our eyes focused upon the Lord. Watch the Lord now. He's our mover. Praise God. He's our mover. He's our shaker. He's a move and a shaker. Let us trust his mighty power. Let us trust the Lord's mighty strength. And remember that many mighty promises has been given to us. Praise God. Uh, chew on them. Eat on them. Praise God. Swallow them. Praise God. Psalm 16 and 8. I've set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Why? Because he's at my right hand. Praise God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thy own understanding. All thy ways acknowledge him. He will direct thy path. And then that Isaiah 26, 3, and 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Hallelujah. Trust in the Lord forever. When the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Oh, praise God. Now, I realize that today, praise God, we've been led to encourage the believers mostly today. But now to those of you that are listening and you are unsaved and you felt a little bit left out of this conversation here today because of your unsavedness and because of your lack of spiritual understanding. And uh, uh, you're not sure maybe you, that you are a child of God. Maybe, it's, maybe that's a question mark in your life. But God has a universal message just 
for you today, all unbelievers today. God got a universal message for you. And that message is that you must repent of your sins. Huh? That's the problem with the world today. Every corner of the world, the problem is sin. Who has the remedy for sin? Only Christ Jesus. Praise God. He's called you to repent, the world to repent of their sin. Turn to Christ for rest. Rest. Rest from the weariness that sins brings upon us in this life, upon this whole generation. Sin has, praise God, ravished our communities and our families today. So we need to turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord. He quenched the thirst that sin has created deep down in our soul. There's a thirst. Come to the water and drink. There's a thirst deep down inside that sin has created. Only the water of life that comes from Christ can heal us. He only can give you the rest that you desire right now. The quenching of your thirst that you desire right now. Only Christ can give it to you. Praise God. And he will. If you turn to him today. If you turn to him today and, and, and if you accept his invitation. Praise God that he's so gracious to have given us throughout the word of God. Praise God that I, Matthew 11, I love 11, 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor in heaven laden. I know you're laboring in heaven laden. I'll give you rest. He said, turn, uh, turn to me. Just come to me. Come, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Will you do it today? Praise God. Will you do it today in the name of the Lord? Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. Thank you, Lord, for your word. I pray, God, the anointing, the power of God, like seal this word to the hearts of your people, those who you have brought to this broadcast, to this table, to set and to eat from your plate, Father. I pray you feed them. Feed them your word today, Lord, and your word, Father God, might take root deep in their hearts and nourishment, be nourishment for them in the name of Jesus, that they might be strong in Christ Jesus. And Lord, I'll be mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you like this video, praise God, uh, go over and hit that like button over there. And then hit that subscribe button so that when we come again, you'll be notified. I'd like to say, we're not asking you to commit to give any kind of money because this preacher has been told by God not to ask nobody for any money. So it's not going to happen. But I do want you as a witness for Christ. If you are really saved, help me spread God's word. Praise God. Subscribe. Huh? And then you can you can piggyback off your subscription and, and, and send this word out. Praise God. That's, that's one of the medium God has given us to spread the word, to go into the whole world and preach this gospel. Will you help me do that? Praise God. Will you help me do that today? And remember now, we're on Sermon Audio, we're on Facebook, and we're on uh, YouTube also. So we own these medias, and uh, praise God, I pray God that you will tune in and be strengthened, that you might be strong in Christ Jesus. And until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you is my prayer today. Amen.